in utero, the only red flag that we received was um, was called a sequential screening test that I did, and it was a common uh, my OB, every woman does it in the practice, and um, it was an elevated number. But when we dug deeper as to what that meant, no one could really give us a clear answer. They said it could be elevated for a number of reasons. A, for example, something as small as having a birthmark on your body could elevate this number um, or something more extreme. And the only way to truly know would at that time would have been to have me do an amniocentesis. And my OB just recommended based on all of my other numbers and statistics that he did not recommend at the time I do anything. So during utero, in utero, we didn't, we assumed everything was fine. <laughs> um, and then I had a regular, I had a C-section delivery um, because Jack was breech. So it was regular, you know, routine. Um, and, you know, since he came, since he was born, there was just, we always just knew something was wrong. Uh, right away, he was whisked away. He wasn't getting um, as much oxygen as, you know, he needed. Um, he spent a few days in the NICU. Um, once his oxygen levels leveled out, um, his temperature kept dropping. So that is a risk of infection in a newborn. And so they were just ruling out infection. He did not end up having one. Um, we did not know why his, we still don't know why his temperature kept dropping. Um, he was born with craniosynostosis, sagittal specifically. So the, um, the, um, his head had fused together um, along this route. And so his head was growing in one direction from front to back and it wasn't able to grow side to side. So um, it looked, he looked different at birth. Um, and he had a few more complications at birth, a heart defect um, and, and a few other things. So that was kind of our starting point. And then since then, um, I would say the first year of Jack's life was definitely the most challenging from an, um, an emotional and physical standpoint. Um, he was very sick. So um, he got sick, I would say for the first time, just a bad cold around Thanksgiving. So he was about eight or nine months old. And um, it just went downhill very fast. We found him unresponsive in his crib in the morning. Uh, we had to rush him to the emergency room where he was immediately intubated upon arrival. And um, that started our journey of about, I think we counted at one point, like 31 days um, at, in the hospital, intubated for probably 13 of them on and off. He was intubated at two different occasions. Um, the most was nine days. Um, and what was happening, which was interesting, I think, for the physicians there was that the, I don't want to say the only reason, because it's a big reason, but he wasn't breathing because of, the, there was one reason, and it was because his mucus and his secretions were too thick for his narrow airway. So every time they tried to extubate him, he just basically couldn't clear his, his mucus, and there'd be almost like a plug. Um, and he would desat, I mean, I mean, at one point, he went into, you know, he, yeah, a, he, a doctor told us he had a cardiac event. Yeah, so we were not there to not witness this. You're about your, you know, your, your 10 month old. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he, but even prior to that, once he had the surgery for craniosynostosis, which like, we thought that was the big hurdle, um, little did we know, but that, but he had that surgery at three months old. Yeah. Um, and that was, you know, like an eight hour, you know, intense procedure, intense, you know, craniotomy effectively. Um, and he got done with that and we all sort of kind of put that behind us and said, okay, we're, we're good. Um, but Amy being, you know, trained in, um, early childhood development, um, being a special ed teacher, uh, in the public schools, uh, her mom being a occupational therapist for children, they both knew something was not quite right and things were not developing the way they should be. Um, and as, as Jack you know, got a little bit older and we would interact with, you know, other babies his age, we, we noticed that he was behind. So we knew something was going on. Yeah. Um, and then all the trips to the hospital, um, they told us that, you know, when Jack gets sick, you know, he goes from, you know, because of his narrow airway, you know, you're going from breathing through, you know, a toilet paper roll to breathing through a cocktail straw. Um, so that was the big that was the big issue that, that kept us there. And, um, and that was really hard. And it was towards the end of one of those days that, um, that the geneticist came in and said, I, I think we have it. I think we know what this is. And Jack had done, um, at three months old was when we, 
I always knew something was wrong, um, but I did want to wait till after his cranial surgery just to see if, I don't know, I guess I was hopeful that maybe that would somehow open up his brain, the ability to grow because we were loosening the plates. I don't know what I was hoping, but um, at three months when he had the surgery, when nothing changed from like a, he almost had like a dead look behind his eye. Like, there was he no track well. There was no aspect. Um, he didn't know, you know, you walk in now, we, we've since had two typical babies. And, you know, you realize how engaging they are. And, at, you know, three, four months, they start looking at you and smiling and laughing. That was stuff was just never happening. So he received therapy as early as four months old was when he received physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy for the first time. Um, and he would get each one one day a week. And we as a family would carry out the, um, you know, we had the homework assignments and we would carry everything out at home. Um, and to this day, that's, he receives a lot of therapy. Yeah. Thank you.